So you're studying for the SAT Math Level 2 Subject Test. You've come to the right place. I'm Dan from WeWillTeachYouMath.com. Guys, when you're using these videos to study, make sure you pause the video at the beginning when the problem first comes on the screen and try it on your own. Most of your practice should be done this way, actively and independently. Then, if after you try the problem on your own, you still find it tricky, that's when you watch the video explanation. In fact, you can use any resources that you have available to you to try to figure it out so that the next time a similar problem comes your way, you'll be ready. Enjoy, and thanks for watching. 33. The length of the major axis of an ellipse whose equation is 10x squared plus 20y squared equals 200. So, a couple things going on here. First of all, we're dealing with an ellipse. They've told us that. We should be able to figure that out on our own, but in this case we know, so that's good. And they want to know the length of the major axis. So what we need to know to start is the equation of an ellipse, the standard equation of ellipse. So we could go into all the conics, and I won't do a full review here, but you need to know the general equations for a circle, an ellipse, a parabola, and hyperbola. So, and there's some similarities between them, so it's a good idea to review all the conics for SAT2s. Just a really short version here, standard equation for an ellipse says x minus h quantity squared, where x is a variable and h is a constant, divided by a squared, plus, and it has to be plus, because if it's minus that makes it a hyperbola instead, y minus k, again y is a variable, k is a constant, squared over b squared equals 1. And it has to equal 1, not 0, not some other number. And that's, a, that's different from the circle, right? Because the circle, it equals the radius squared. So this is the general equation for an ellipse. We have a specific equation here, but it doesn't really look like this. So on first glance, you might not recognize, if they hadn't told us that it's an ellipse, that this equation describes an ellipse. So can we somehow change it around to fit this standard form? First thing we can do is divide by 200 on both sides. If we do that, we'll get uh, x squared over 20 plus y squared over 10 equals 1. So that's a good start. We got the 1 on the other side. And what's cool about the numerators here is our, our h and k are 0. So that, that works kind of the way it works in a circle the h and k would be the coordinates of the center and since we don't have an h or k they're both equal to zero so this ellipse is centered about the origin and we don't have to worry about those so that helps and then the only other thing we need to account for is the denominator we need an a squared and a b squared we don't really have that but what we can do is we can re-express these denominators as their square roots squared and why would we do that let's see what this looks like we can change this to be x squared over the square root of 20 squared. I know that seems kind of weird, like why are we doing that? But if we just change this one as well, instead of just being 10, we'll make it the square root of 10 squared. And that's okay, right? I mean, we didn't really change anything. If you take the square root of something and then square it, you get back the same thing. So theoretically, these are equal. So it's totally algebraically legitimate. The question is, why do we do it? We do it because we want it to match the format of the standard equation. Because A and B tell us something about the ellipse. What they tell us is the length of the major and minor axis. So this thing, also I should mention, whichever one is bigger, that also tells us which way the ellipse is going to be oriented. So in this case, the number that's under the x variable, root 20, is bigger than root 10. So we could say a equals root 20 and b equals root 10. And the fact that a is greater than b tells us that the ellipse is oriented horizontally. And if b were bigger than a, it would be oriented vertically. So I'm, I'm not even going to do a a real sketch but just kind of schematically so you can get a feel for what this looks like this thing would be an oval that's horizontally stretched as opposed to vertically stretched and the length of the major axis is the length from one end to the other 
the way it's the longest. So in this case, if it's horizontally oriented, it's the, it's the I don't want to say diameter because it's not a circle, but it's the cord that traverses the, the ellipse along its longest axis. And the distance between one of those points and the center is A. So the entire length of the major axis is 2A. And by the same logic, the distance between the origin or the center and the minor axis, the smaller diagonal, is B, so the minor axis is 2B. Minor axis, major axis. And they want to know the length of the major axis, so it's 2A. A is root 20. 2 times root 20, throw that in your calculator, and you will get 8.94 that's choice D. Hi, thanks for watching. If anything's still confusing or you need a little extra help, drop me an email, leave a comment, or give me a call. I answer every message. And if you want to check out more videos like this, visit wewillteachyoumath.com. See you in the next video.